Toronto home sales fall for a second month as momentum stalls. Average price of a Toronto home falls to 1,118,374 as sales trend lower. Even in an August lull, real estate buyers are still circulating. So these are just some of the recent headlines that have come out talking about the Toronto Real Estate Board, specifically about the July numbers. This is what this video is all about. We're gonna take a look at the numbers, take a look at what trends we're in right now. Are we in a buyer and a seller market? What's going on in the Toronto real estate market? If you're interested in that, let's take a look at this video coming up. Hey guys, this is Danilo from the King Realty Group. We've helped hundreds of people move in and out of the GTA area. We have buyers and sellers in the marketplace today, so we know exactly what's going on in our marketplace. And we do this video every single month to educate you guys and to teach you as to what's going on here in the real estate market, our ups and downs, our trends, and to hopefully educate you guys to make much better decisions in your own real estate journey. Okay, so first and foremost, we're always looking at our doc graph. This gives us a really macro picture of how we got to this particular price point that we are today, our average price for the month of July, 2023. And let's put that up on the screen right now so you see what I'm talking about. Here we have it guys, it is our doc graph. So we have prices every single month from 2018. And you see that in general, we have an upward trend here in the Toronto real estate market that peaked out pretty much in the month of February, 2022. Since then, we've kind of got a bunch of drops into this year and we had a bit of a stagnant period. Prices dropped just towards the end of 2022. And now we had a little bit of a resurgence into the spring market of this year. And now as of July, 2023, we have a bit of a significant dip, I would say. We're still above that $1.1 million mark. And actually our price point is still just slightly above our price point from last year. Let's see if this turns into a trend. I mean, we're still in the summer months. So typically speaking, when we go into a, from June into a July into an August, we typically do have dips. And we can take a look at our screen here to kind of uh, uh, prove that to us. If we look back at our previous June, you see that we had a bit of a dip in that summer market as well. And if we go back one more year further, we also see that from June to July until August, we also have a bit of dip. So it's not uncommon for us to see this little bit of a drop. I think probably better indicator of what type of trend we're gonna be going into these coming months is gonna be a lot more clear in the fall months of um, uh, September, October. We're probably gonna see how our market is going to react to recent interest rate changes. You know, the fact that, um, you know, our mortgage uh, budgets on a monthly basis are super high. You know, the fact that a lot of buyers are being priced out and going to the rental market. There's more inventory, but more sellers in the marketplace as well. All those things kind of jumbled in together. We're gonna have a clearer picture of what our direction is gonna be probably in the fall months. Right now, we could just be getting a mix of summer months with this bit of uncertainty being uh, added into the mix as well because of the interest rates have gone up very recently. This is kind of what's going on guys. So here you have it from last month, June to July, we did have a bit of a dip. So let's see how that plays out in the months to come. All right guys, so let's move on to our month to month comparison. We're gonna take a look at how we compare to the month of June. And we're also gonna take a look at uh, different property types as well. So let's pull that up in a sec here. Okay, so here we have our comparison from June to July in 2023. Let's take a look at how we did our different property types. So for detached homes, we had uh, 2,378 sales with an average price of 257. That was actually a drop of 29% in sales from the month of June and a drop of just under 7% in average price from the month of June as well. Very interesting to see that. Semi detaches, we had 445 sales with an average price of 1,101. 1,876. That was a drop of 34% from last month in sales and about 9% average price drop from the month of June as well. Townhomes, we had 874 sales with an average price of 956,066. That was a drop of 29% from last month for sales and about a 2% drop in average price from the month of June. Condos, we had 1,505 sales with an average price of 735,171. Very similarly though, we had a drop of about 29% in sales and a half a percent uh, an average price dip as well. So pretty much on average, we had about a 30% drop in sales. That is activity, people buying homes. Now this could be guys that it's just a regular summer, okay? July and August, we have a dip in sales volume and just activity overall. 
people such as yourselves, I'm sure, going out on vacation, you're visiting family, uh, maybe you're even living in the city, going on flights to resorts in Mexico or whatever you guys do. I've done a bit of that too over these last few weeks. I'm hoping you guys did the same. And for that reason, activity dropped. People are doing things. Okay, and that could be a real reason why we're seeing these numbers this way. On an average basis though, we have an average price of 1,118,374. And it was a drop of about 5% from last month. We did see that in the chart earlier. And drivers of this is just the low rise market, the detached and semi detaches, which combined had a drop of about 16% from the month of June. Okay, so again, guys, take this, I would say with a grain of salt, just because we have seasonality, right? We have people doing things, activity typically drops in these uh, summer months. We're gonna see in the months of fall uh, to see if we have a, an actual trend here, whether our prices are going up or staying the same or are going down. We're gonna see that in the next uh, months to come for sure, okay? So let us now transition to our year over year numbers. This is gonna give us a different perspective and we're gonna see how we compare it to July 2022. So let's take a look here, guys. We actually do have 5,250 sales this year, which was slightly higher than last year. I remember last year was a declining month. It was a time where we were still dropping in price from the peak of February, 2022. And so our sales activity was lower. And you're gonna see here that our price point at that time was also lower. So believe it or not, our price today, 2023 is actually higher than last year. But like I said, last year we were in declining prices. So, you know, we're starting to see now that we're actually in positive territory on a year to year basis only though. Okay, because you saw that month over month, we we're actually still lower. Let's take a look at how this looks like here. So these are our year over year changes. We had 7.8% increase in sales. We do have more listings on the marketplace though, 11.5%, so there's more inventory. And I am seeing that out there. There's more active listings. Our average price was up 4.2%. And our days on the market at this point are actually still lower than last year's as well. But I believe like these numbers are starting to kind of equal out a bit which is interesting to see. So, um, you know, let's see how we compare on a year to year basis in the months to come. All right, guys, so we're coming off of some interesting changes in the month of July. We had an additional interest rate increase, which I can tell you for sure that it has dampered buyer behavior. I am noticing there is an increase in inventory as well, which means our sellers are starting to be like, hey, let me put my property for sale right now because I wanna capture a decent price point because I don't know what's gonna happen in the future is a bit of uncertainty. What I'm also noticing is that our months of inventory is increasing. So we're starting to move from like a seller's market, which believe it or not, we've been in for the last little while. Maybe if you knew about what was going on in the fall market, we had a bit of a resurgence in price and uh, people were getting successful sales, right? Multiple offer sales, a lot of buyer demand. That's slowing down quite a bit. I'm noticing that people who are trying to price their property low and trying to get multiple offers not working out every single time anymore. So that's a couple factors. It's buyers kind of pooling and at the same time, just there's more competition in your neighborhood. I'm sure you're starting to notice that you have uh, more signs in your neighborhoods but less sold signs on top of them. Uh, it's because there's more competition amongst them and you know they're just staying on the market a little bit longer than before. So we're gonna see if that's something that's gonna continue into these months to come. Uh, it's gonna be very interesting to see, okay? So if you're a seller in this marketplace, guys, you need to do all the bells and whistles, okay? Let's not just, I wouldn't go for the discount guys here where they don't have a budget to market your property properly and you're not gonna separate yourselves amongst the competition in your neighborhood or in your building. You need that, it's crucial, especially if you're a condo, because there's a bunch of condos out there that look very similar, especially in your neighborhood, and the buyers that are coming into your neighborhood are gonna look at all of them, and they're gonna pick the best one. The top two, three condos in your area are gonna sell, and you know the other ones are gonna sit, uh, because I'm already seeing it happen. So don't make a mistake in going for like a rookie guy that doesn't know how to market your home properly, because you need to have someone who has the experience and has been through markets like this and know exactly what they need to do in order to not just get your best price, but to market and get the exposure that it requires, okay? As a buyer, guys, there are opportunities out there if you have the cash for it. This is not gonna work for every buyer, okay? There's a lot of buyers who have now migrated into rentals the rental business has, has been booming recently, okay? And I don't know if I really like that, okay? But the truth is many buyers are moving that way because it's really tough. Many people are getting approved and you might even get a budget that's good enough to buy something, okay? But it's the price that you gotta pay. It's the expense, the mortgage amount that you gotta pay on a monthly basis. And then you add a maintenance fee on top of that or you add your utilities on top of that and your property tax, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what's becoming tough for a lot of people. It's a tough pill to swallow, I gotta tell you. But if you're in a position where maybe you've sold a property in a year ago, or you're sitting on some cash, you can put 20% down or more on a property, okay? And you see that the monthly expense is not too bad, even at that 6% rate, high five, 6% rate, even 7% rate on a variable, depending, 
you can manage those payments. This could be a really good opportunity for you because I'm seeing more inventory in the marketplace, more options for you. You can now maybe get a property at a better price than you may have seen in the last few months. You're going to be in less competition amongst other buyers. So maybe direct negotiations between the seller. When I start seeing these things pop up in the marketplace, I think opportunity because it's very rare that I see it. I've been in this market for 10 years now. Okay. I've been looking at it, seeing buyers and sellers move around for what it seems like for me anyways, forever helping hundreds of people do this. Okay. There's windows. There's not always a market in the GTA specifically where, you know, you're not in competition. So I would say that if you have the cash in the bank and if uh, you're in a good position, you're making decent money per month and you know that you can manage the payments today opportunity because in the future, once interest rates do drop because they will with time, you're actually going to have a lower payment later. Okay. Same thing goes for the investors in this case. Okay, guys, you got cash in the bank. Look for properties that have units, sec two units, three units, buy properties that have bigger lots, many cities around the GTA, including the Toronto area. Now you're able to put garden suites. You're able to have add density on that one parcel of land. And so if you can put three units, four units, even in the city of Toronto, okay, where you're buying a property in the 900 to 1.1 million range, that's actually a good price point. Okay. You can get a triplex. You can get a semi detached, able to maybe even have a garage in the back. They can be a fourth unit. Possibilities are endless. If you want to look for them, don't be scared if you're an investor guys, because this is the moment where you got to have your eyes open. Okay. And you're going to be ready with some cash, pretty liquid. Okay. to kind of pounce. And we can look into the mortgage side too. Can I get a property? Okay. Can I buy one? Okay. As a second, third property. What do I need? What are the requirements? Get all things lined up. So when the opportunity hits and you get an email from us with a wholesale deal, or you get an email from us from, a, from an off market property, that's, you know, an opportunity that you don't see an MLS. We got those guys DM us. All right. We got more information for you. Okay, guys, thanks for joining us. If you want more information and emails such as this below, we have some sign up links. If you want to get more information about our off market deals, because we do send those on a weekly basis, by the way, DM us below, send us a direct mail, I don't know, in our social somewhere and we'll get in touch with you and we'll send those out to you right away. Okay. Daniel from King Realty. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.